Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It's so great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. And I say welcome back because you all have listened to and watched a ton of shows from us. And we're so forever grateful. Um, And I want to just thank you for all of the participation. And clearly, some of the topics we talk about are, for me, I am a student. And so what I love is when I have across my desk or I get to see some very interesting work, whether it's listening to the audio book that I listened to over the past couple of days or actually reading, you know, the book that I'm about to share with you. What I find is there's so much more to more. And this is what I mean. I love living, and Benny has heard me, 20 years we've been doing this show from the original Crest Busting show. And out of the gate, it's been very clear to me that I entered this arena not knowing anything about anything. I didn't plan to step into a journey that would enable me to be so curious and talk to thousands and thousands of authors in a 20-year period. But my curiosity came from the place, I don't know what I don't know. And I was so eager to hear what these folks had to say. Um, Vesa Eti is joining me here today. Vesa Eti is somebody that, not author of a book, that is just one thing when you describe who he is. That's like one thing, but it's much more than that. And also he traveled this journey with his co-author, which we'll talk about today, who's not with us. But this is a book that I love talking about and I never thought that I would. Light Bringers of the North, Secrets of the Occult Tradition of Finland. Now, why is this so interesting to me? I'm a kid from the Bronx whose best friend, Linda, who books this show, her parents took me in. Her dad was born in Norway. I never, I I mean, here I was over here, But at a very young age, I got to learn some things about different cultures that were so amazing. But what about these secrets? What about the secrets? What about these occult traditions of Finland? What do we know about them? And what is it that we may know intuitively, but may not know? And I think in the book that I read and then listened to the audio of what I'm very clear about is when we talk about the clairvoyant of a a nation, it is very clear to me why we are talking about this nation, why we are talking about so many aspects of Finland that we don't know about. However, we are learning about the culture. But what is it about this and what are we gonna talk about today? And you know, what is it that the soul and the misrepresentation of the soul, or let me just say this my language, not his, the misrepresentation of what we could have learned, but I don't think did yet, of what the United States has called the New Age Movement. Now today, we are going to take this journey with my very special guest. The book is fascinating, but it filled in so many gaps for me because I was thinking to myself, am I the only one that kind of feels something's a little bit out of alignment here? That's it. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here with you. 
um, I am going to start out with what I said. I love doing what I'm doing. Everybody around me thought I was losing my mind. 20 years ago, I dialed the wrong phone number, and here we are today. Um, your, your host, you're right here as a special guest on the Dr. Pat show, but you're also on the network we created 15 years ago. Um, and I loved that I entered this arena with like a beginner's mind kind of, right? And then I got confused. And I think what you all have written in this book is going to help people understand things better because I think we have gotten confused about uh esotericism uh, you know you know it, what what is esoteric what isn't you know what are the rules so to speak are there rules and then more importantly in your book what we've forgotten i want to start with that question for you you've written this book you're an expert in this field i want to know from you for the moment how has this journey of writing this book and especially with your co-author who's not here with us now but how did this change you? Well, that's a good question. Um, it's been transformative in, a, in many ways. Um, well, the story about the book begins in 2014 when <clears throat> Bertu approached me at the book fair in Helsinki. I had translated a Diana de Salzman's The Reality of Being, and uh, I was there talking about it. And Bertu had this idea about this book. And uh, he approached me after the talk and said that, listen, I have this kind of idea. Like, uh, there is no book like this published ever before. And uh, I think uh, there is a need for it. Like, uh, would you be interested? Uh, he had written um, some of the stuff I had written earlier, and uh, I had a... a fairly popular blog I was writing back then and he liked my approach to things and also my sense of humor and he thought that uh, we have a good chemistry and things like that would work out but I was a bit hesitant in the beginning I was like mm, well yeah let's see and uh, a few months went and uh, he approached me again and uh, we talked a bit more and I was like hey that's actually a good idea and we get well along and that's an interesting interesting thing in many ways and uh we got the book deal fairly fairly easily and we get mm. very good friends very quickly and uh and um that uh, we had done quite a bit of our research and writing uh about the topics uh, already at that point but then actually writing the book began and uh, we did uh, more research and more interviews and and I get to know each other very well. So it transformed me in many ways. Like, a, mm -hmm. well, our friendship was there. I got to know the um, topic more better than I did uh, before. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was the publicity. The book was a huge success in Finland when it came out. And, um, well, then there was this thing that uh, uh, my friend, Pertu, passed away. Actually, yes. ex ex exactly on this day, four years ago, Yes. on this very day. And um, so there came an extra dimension to this book and this process I shared with uh, Bertu. And um, well, after he had passed away, uh, I was reminded how important it was for him to get this book published also in English. He friendly nudged me very often like that, hey, uh, we should get this book out in English. And uh, because I had been doing some translation work earlier, he thought that I, I could do this too, because we could save some money by, <laughs> by doing it that way. So, um, yeah, and I, well, I was busy with other things, but I went, um, I got them done around 2020. Um, I was still remembering that um, this pro this project and that it should be finished. Um, yeah. uh, Berto had even come to my dreams, reminding that uh, we need to finish this thing. <laughs> so I felt it was a matter of honor to his yeah. memory and his work and what we had shared. So I continued uh, from where he had left with the inner traditions and translating the book. And uh, here we are today. Um, yeah. It's uh, although I say it my, myself. Um, 
It's a one-of-a-kind book in the way that there is no this kind of uh, history book uh, published ever before. This is the first time that this uh, this topic is uh, presented um, in one book. Uh, and uh, if somebody is interested in the topic, I would say this is a good place to start. <laughs> yeah, I found it fascinating. I won't tell you why. Um, so well put. And, you know, such an honor to really, even though even though he is not here in, physically, he's here in spirit, mm, right? Yeah. Um, I know what it's like to do dedications to people that we know and who have known and who have inspired us and then to sort of carry the torch and carry it forward and finish things. I know this. Um, and, and I lost one of my mentors. My No, my let me just say the woman that changed my life very, very suddenly in 1999. And you go through this period and then you realize that the vision and the mission is so much bigger than any one of us individually. You had to finish this, right? Mm -hmm. I know yeah. you did. And then yeah. I read the book, I listened to the audio and I have to tell you, I don't know how to explain this and I hope you're going to help me with this. This is not just a book of words. I found myself, okay, I'm going to really get a little bit out there. I found myself as I was reading and I was, I was listening and I was listening to the dialogue that was going on about, you know, this idea of new thought. And I, my head was going like this. I was like, yes, I just, I didn't know how to talk about it. Yes. Right. And then I thought, these are secrets. This, the, what's in this book, people don't know about, let's just say they don't know about it at the intellect level, but they know about it. You see what I mean? Because as mm. I was going through here, I was reading about some of the rituals, some of the things, some of the, some of the things that I had never heard of before, but I could feel the energy of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah, Isn't that really what happens when we connect? to not just writings, but you brought life to some of these people, to some of these these characters and rituals, didn't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, I think I know what you mean. I um, can relate to that very well. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad to hear that you experienced that. That's great. Yeah, and I'm, I'm acutely aware that this is also, I mean, honestly, I commend you on the level of research in here and the mm -hmm. level of effort that you put in here. Here's Thank what I want you. to ask you. And I know they send me all these, all the publishers, they send me all these questions, but they assume people don't read the book. I read the book. Here's the question that I want to ask you. I was reading the book and I had at least three aha moments, but I want to ask you, when you finally sat down, put it all together, did you have, was there one or another where you said, whoa, what? <laughs> oh well what should what, what should i say there were well there were quite many uh, kind yep. of wow uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Mo moments but um if i would say just one which wasn't really uh anything new as such but uh it really hit me in a new way it was at some point the experience of this uh, spectrum of uh, manifestations of uh, human spirit in a way mm -hmm. like a, what kind of forms a genuine search can take it, it's the spectrum is so huge and this is this can be found from any country any culture like a, there are so many different kinds of people even within the same same culture same same country there are people like in our books there are uh, uh, folks who did some absolutely horrifying uh, things to people who were way more educated and noble mm -hmm. and ethical, but they had all of them had some kind of honest uh, spiritual effort and search, some kind of effort being in touch with the deeper reality universe, gaining deeper knowledge. Uh, communicating with it and uh, bringing um, change, um, good change, some kind of change to the world and to themselves mm -hmm. in the process. So mm -hmm. 
what really kind of hit me was this uh, whole spectrum of uh, the diversity of different kind of approaches that humans have to these per perennial profound questions. We are amazing race. <laughs> oh my God. You know how I knew that I, that, that to ask you this question, because I, I went back and, and I love books like this. So I will read this book over and over again. There are parts of it that I will do my own research on. But when I went back, I read the addendum at the beginning. Right. Mm. And, and I love the addendum because thank you for putting this in here because <laughs> you're absolutely right. I mean, this is what this is what Bess is saying. This is it. The work only provides glimpses into the history of Finnish esotericism. You know, glimpses into it. And and I love that you did that because I have to tell you that when you go through the book, you want more. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I I mean, you go through and you start to read, and we'll talk about some more detail and some mm -hmm. of the things. But you go through and you know to use your words, musings, right? you know, mm -hmm. that the book portrayed, you go through and you say, oh no, there's got to be more here. But I am so shocked by how the world doesn't know more about this. Are you? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but it's a funny thing that uh, when you look at, uh, if somebody, let's say Google, um, <laughs> Uh, um, Amazon or just internet, like uh, what was Nordic spiritualism, Nordic occultism, Nordic new age, whatever. You find all kinds of things and uh, like uh, uh, this uh, northern forms of magic, runes, paganism, asa through whatever. Uh, there's tons of stuff, lots of book, all books, all kinds of things. But when it comes to Finland and Finnish kind of angle to all of that, there's a uh, well, there's stuff like a uh, folkloric, folkloristic stuff, and uh, of course, like a famous glimpses of that, like the national epic of Finland, Kalevala is there in English, and uh, related materials. But uh, when it comes to uh, stuff in general, there's not so much like that. Uh, let's say Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland. Yeah, Finland has been a quite, uh, quite of a, in a blind spot, a kind of a quiet corner for some reason there's not been a book like that before so um so i guess um uh, there was a need yeah for this kind of and that's book. really why i'm bringing it up because there's just absolutely a need and i think when you all go through and you take a look at the book and for those of you just tuning in let me just be let me just repeat where we are um and i think jacob may be putting some of the images up this is light bringers of the north secrets of the occult tradition of finland uh, uh, and, and for me today, as I look at this and I look at, okay, here we are today, this is what we're doing. And I think about what you have put together. It is a journey, a journey that's that when I think about this, you're a writer, you're a translator, you are... <laughs> You, you are in the world of comparative religion. You know, you are somebody that lives and breathes and walks this. And yet at the same time, as I'm going through this, I'm thinking to myself, I have seen some of this before. Where did I see it before? Oh, wait a minute. It's embedded ever so slightly in our pop culture, in some <laughs> of the ways we show things, right? Yeah. Um, in some of the conversations we talk about, about brotherhood and so forth. It, it's in this, it's in here somewhere, just parts of it. But there's mm -hmm. so much more to reveal and unveil on both the, la the light and dark sides of this, right? Let's mm -hmm. talk about the contrast and light and dark sides if, uh, if we could. And then mm -hmm. I would love for you to walk people through the book because I think they'll be fascinated that mm -hmm. for me, it's much more than a historic representation it really starts to get you to ask questions about things. It's very different for me than a number of other books I've read like this from other cultures, you see, mm -hmm. because it doesn't always answer the question, but it makes you aware that the energy of this is around. Mm -hmm. So light and dark. We light cannot avoid it. We cannot avoid the contrast of light and dark, can we? Should we? 
I think we can. It's a <laughs> it, 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 it's it's a hardwired in our thinking how we make sense of the world. Like uh, we we put things like uh, you know this like uh, there's bad, there's good, there's um, all all kind of uh, opposites. And when it comes to uh, spiritual topics, there's of course the same thing manifest there too. Like, uh, but uh, things are not really black and white like there's a uh, gray shades in between and there's the question also like uh, what it, what does this let's say white or black mean and uh, when you dig into these things you can see that all of a sudden that what seemed to be a white earlier or black might look like that uh, wait a second uh, there's this can be same things for at different times for different people, they can mean absolutely the same things with um, mm -hmm. different concepts and so. So it's really good to keep mind open and um, see, see what like, like um, some people meant by some concepts, let's say like a white magic, black magic or yeah. white brotherhood or black brotherhood, whatever. Sometimes these are just like uh, terms to to give a bad name to people you don't like. Like a Pekka Ervas, the guy who, who we start with the book, yes. uh, the, uh, the very big name in Finnish uh, esotericism and this history, he uh, lived in the, uh, well, he was born 1875, mm -hmm. died 1934. He was very important for uh, the coming of Theosophical Society to Finland and uh, other things too. Uh, uh, some people uh, some people considered that uh, he was a black magician that he was a bad guy and and all kind of things but uh if you look like uh, his career his books uh, his uh lectures everything he did he was really honest seeker yeah. of truth very noble in his like a uh, pursuit and also as as a, as a person uh you can see that he wasn't like a uh, bad or or kind of uh, outrageous person like some magicians in history mm -hmm. have been let's say Alistair Crowley or somebody like that but Pekka Ervas wasn't anything like that he was a very very we could say decent person but there were still people who were uh, yeah. labeling him as a he was a black magician he was a bad person he was ungodly so it like a, somebody like him has been called um black, black magician but uh, he was far away from that so these things can mean very very many things yeah uh, i would have loved for him to be around a little bit longer and here's why uh and, <laughs> and because i think he had an influence and you know and by the way for all of you out there you know uh, we're going to make sure that you have information you, you if you get the book and i hope you do you can start to do your own research on this you know he also created his own society i think it the mm -hmm. uh, English translation, I think, is Rose Rose uh, Cross. But Rose here's Cross, the thing, yes. Rose Cross. Yeah, the thing I love about this is Carl Jung, as well. And there's one letter from Jung that you get your hands on from 1960, where you realize the pressure he was under to conform. And you know, it's so interesting. You get a guy like him. And people, people think they know him, right? Everybody, Carl Jung, Carl Jung, Freud, Jung, Freud, right? And then you get a glimpse of what his struggle was and how criticized he was, right? And so the reason that I, I love that you shared that story is I, I'm not sure I know many people that we can talk about that at some point in their lives was not put up there for criticism, including Mother Teresa. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. I mean, people looked at her like she lost her mind mm -hmm. until they realized she didn't. Mm -hmm. But there is something you bring forward in the book that is so important for us to talk about. I, I want to talk about it when we come back. Um, as I walk through the book, there's so much that I learned, but there's so much I had to think about further. And that is esotericism versus new age. New mm. Age. What was it about New Age that, you know, for people like me, we could not quite understand. And yet we talked to so many people who talked about New Age. And then even after talking about it, we still didn't quite understand it. 
<laughs> Hence, a lot of feedback, a lot of things that people didn't see. When we come back, I would love for you to take us into that conversation. But before we go to break, how do people get a copy of the book? This is, they can get this probably on Amazon, right? Or they could get mm -hmm. it, um, what is the best place to send people, would you say? Oh, well, it's very well available from many, many places. Amazon, yeah. of course, then there are other uh, internet uh, stores. And uh, it's very well, I think, uh, available just from a yeah. regular uh, bookstores. Uh, yeah. But, but um, just Google the name Lightbringers of the North and uh, yeah. you, you, you will find plenty of uh, opportunities where to where to get it. It's quite well available. Yeah. And I want to say to everybody out there, you could also go to lightbringersofthenorth.com. You'll see the book there. You can get that available. There's also a way for you to take a look at Facebook, Amazon, Instagram. If you go over there and take a look at all of this, what you'll find is more information that really, like if you're anything like me, that made you curious about even getting more information. When we come back, we're going to have this conversation about what is new age? What is, what, when you hear the word esoteric, what does that mean to you? Do we know what it means? But I'm I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to have I'm going to have Vesa <laughs> get into that today. I'm not doing it. I Vess is going to do it all. Let's take a short break, Benny Jacob. We'll be right back. Yeah, I got to love that song, got to love that Benny, mm -hmm. and got to love this conversation today. I want to make sure all of you know, we are talking about light bringers of the North, secrets of a cult tradition in Finland. Now, here's what I want to say to all of you. You know that this has never been more popular in our pop culture. And when we talk about the North, what we, what we know least about is Finland. And yet at the same time, when you read this book, you're going to say, well, wait a minute, I think I've seen something. I think I've heard something. So I want to make sure you go to the website Lightbringers, B-R-I-N-G-E-R-S of the North.com. And you'll go to the WordPress site. And what you're going to see here is you can get the book. You can click on Facebook, Instagram, all of that. You will get connected with this. Secrets of the Occult Tradition of Finland. So there's so many things in this book I want to talk about, but I want to talk about this one thing first, because it has been gnawing at me for a good 20 years in my own consciousness. But the conversation, both on the audio book and in the book, when you address new age and esotericism, I was shocked, first of all, that it was there. But then as I read, I understood why. Can you just, can you talk to that for us for a minute? Because most people may read the book and they, they may get to the, get to these pieces and say, oh, we didn't know that, right? But you are uncovering something here. Talk to that. Um, well, the, you mean the basic concepts, yes. just the, the definitions, yeah. Yes. Well, this is something we start the book with, uh, def defining the terms, like uh, so that uh, people know what we are talking about. Well, to begin with, uh, to make something that is not so easy, even more difficult, uh, I need to say that uh, these concepts like esotericism, occultism, new age, these are something that are not fixed in stone. Like uh, the meaning of these words have changed over time within uh, the scholar, scholar, scholar's discussion and uh, in history in general, but um, I can try to put like a, in basic terms like um, what these things mean. Well, um, I would say that in everyday language, uh, esotericism or esoteric it means like a, something mysterious, something difficult to grasp. Um, it's, it's something often associated with things like occultism, mysticism, magic, witchcraft, superstition, supernatural, all these things. And well, the word itself comes from Greek word esoterico, which means something inside, something inner. And when it comes to uh, esotericism as like a spiritual uh, uh, thing. Um, it means uh, knowledge of inner circle or this kind of inner knowledge. 
uh, certain kind of knowledge, spiritual knowledge is associated with this idea of esotericism. Uh, often this is called uh, gnosis, knowledge. And uh, there is also an uh, idea of certain kind of way to gain this kind of uh, inner knowledge. This relates to kind of uh, secret societies mm. or or circle circles of people in general who work with this kind of uh, hidden uh, rejected knowledge. So there is certain kind of way to gain and transmit this knowledge from person to person. And uh, these traditions uh, differ from group to group and uh, and cultures from cu culture to culture and so. But there is certain kind of uh, ways how this is understood, like how this how this happens. So it's something, it's a spirit, uh, esoteric uh, refers to uh, spiritual knowledge that is uh, for, uh, you could say, for initiated persons only, those who know, those who are dedicated to it and share the search. Uh, opposite to esotericism is exotericism or exoteric, like what you can see, read from, uh, think about your local newspaper mm -hmm. or or so this is exoteric what you can find from that website or newspaper is it the new york times or or what is in seattle the biggest newspaper that's not esoteric knowledge this is right. exoteric it's something exoteric is something that is open for anybody everybody can find these things that are in the local newspaper this is public knowledge but esoteric is uh, opposite of that it's only for selected dedicated people who who um, share certain kind of search and uh, understanding of the kind of basics of uh, what it's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, the, the uh, within the um, academic uh, studies, um, there is very very specific definitions like um, what what it's understood to mean, and there is no consensus even well nowadays too like uh, what it exactly right. means. Well, this is, of course, like how it is in science in general, like there are different viewpoints, there is discussion, that whole thing develops. But, um, um, but, but well, yeah, it, it moves on. But what I say, I would say that those are the basic things about esotericism. Then when we go to a new age, uh, which is uh, related to esotericism, but I think uh, this, uh, a friend of mine, Dr. Kenneth Granholm, uh, a scholar of, uh, of uh, comparative religions and esotericism, he said it very well that a new age is a mass popularization of esotericism. It's kind of uh, putting these, uh, these uh, ideas in a more popular, more kind of easy to digest way for a uh, common consumption if you will yes. <laughs> and uh, new new age was a term that was used uh, in the um, within the academics like in the 80s and then in the 90s after that like it is uh, esoteric studies uh, started to become stronger but in general new age is very uh, inclusive as a term it can include like so many things yes and that that that's one of the weaknesses that uh, of the term because uh, it's not very specific like you can count so many different things inside of it but in general it seems to be a kind of a spiritual approach that is first of all it's alternative to the mainstream kind of a religious uh, approach to spiritual questions it's very holistic in its approach it's very positive in general about human potential and uh, well, within these kind of basic parameters, um, it can be so many different things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, so uh, New Age is kind of more uh, popular, easy to digest. Popular, uh, easy to digest, yeah. 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 And it's yeah. more kind of a psychologically explained. Like, exactly. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of more like for self-empowerment and uh, these kind of things. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I ask you the question, because... You know, I mean, for me, I entered this arena not knowing one term from the other, but, you know, in my own personal journey, there was this um, definitely the spiritual awakening of my own life and, and what we're capable of in so many different ways. And, you know, when I was reading your book, I, I was 
interested in not just that part, but then the many other people you bring to light, the many other organizations you bring to light, you bring to light, you shine a light on. But I will say this, I would like you to talk about a couple of them because here's what's going on, really. If we want to go back to that pop culture mainstream energy that's out there, <laughs> there has never been a time in the past decade, in my opinion, that we have had so much focus and acknowledgement for the North. And I'm going to say the North in particular. Once upon a time, the only dialogue people would have about Finland, Norway, Iceland, Denmark, the whole thing, had to do with Santa Claus. <laughs> and it changed. And I say the past 10 years, maybe it's been longer, but there's, there is a fascination. And the fascination is brought to life in your book. And the explanation of why we are so intrigued. Now, you don't need a pop culture blockbuster movie to talk about it. You can look at what people are doing to travel to where you, to Finland, to try mm. people to travel there, right? To travel mm. to places which intrigues them. If I mm. were to ask you, out of all of the people and places that you chose to talk about in the book, and I don't actually know how you scaled it down, to be honest with you. That's why you think you wrote the addendum. Mm -hmm. But out of all of them, who would be your top three that you'd want people to know about today? That's a good question. Um, I couldn't do the, it. I, 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 <laughs> I couldn't pick them. <laughs> Um, absolutely, most of the people uh, discussed in the book are absolutely unknown outside of mm -hmm. Finland be yep. before this book came out. I guess uh, some some might have known Pekka Ervast because of his um, role in Theosophical Society in general, but um, pretty much all the rest uh, are must be unknown. Maybe some in the UFO uh, scene, yes, like Ronin Lena Lukanen Kilde and Johanna Kran, people like that. Their names might have popped up outside of Finland, uh, but uh, I'm I'm not sure. Anyway, Ervast is something uh, I would say that uh, is uh, good to check up. He was a very important figure. Uh, that's that's good. Um, who else? Well, one of my favorites were the uh, these Finnish students of Gurdjieff. Uh, that chapter, I think, is very interesting too. Um, one another of my favorites comes from the parapsychology chapter. There is this uh, man called Jar Fahler, who was a parapsychologist, and uh, he was a, he was a scientist, but he had also like a genuine interest in uh, spiritual work spiritual topics he has he has he was a very fine so rational mind but uh so he was kind of in between two worlds he was a scholar but he was at the same time like somebody who saw that there is something beyond science and there's a, i think we have a quite nice chapter about him and his approach yeah. um he was he would be something i would uh, yeah say people should check up to the chapter about uh, UFOs and their history in Finland is, I'm sure, something that uh, probably interests a lot of people. So that too. Then there are these uh, absolutely wild cards that I think are uh, of interest to people uh, just because of the wild stories involved. <laughs> like Eeyore, Eeyore Bok, who created his own saga about basically that his family knew the secrets of the beginning of the world and uh, how the history really went and uh, that all these secrets were uh, inside this one temple in Espo, Finland, and uh, his family knew the real meanings of words and alphabets and <laughs> all kind of crazy stuff. And and this one character that you mentioned earlier, I think people, it's, it would be a good to check up, Ainu Kassine, this uh, the Claire Volant of the nation. Yes. She was a, she was a very no noble person too, and uh, something I would definitely recommend looking up. Yeah, right and you know, look, those people that really live and breathe in the realms we're talking about, they're quite familiar with history. I mean, I, I don't know that there are many people that I know that I've interviewed or talked to about, let's just say, UFOs that that don't know. Uh, uh, that, that 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 don't have a sense, right, of 
UFOs in Finland and 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 uh, Maria Lox, right? Uh, mm -hmm. LAX. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but you know, when these conversations in these photographs come out and you see them so clearly, these are the things where people look and say, "Northern Finnish town. Oh, that's Finland, right? A town in Finland. Right. And this is this is like a for real thing, right? So when you see a headline that says everyone in the ta this town in Finland has seen a UFO, people pay attention to, but it doesn't quite give the depth of what we're talking about here, especially mm. when we talk about the realm of parapsychology. Now, I mm. found that fascinating because I was reading, okay, when did when did they start to do this research on this? Like light years ahead of other people? Like what? Uh, um, I don't know light years uh, ahead of others. Uh, there was this uh, parapsychological society uh, yeah. in Finland. There was two branches, uh, Swedish language and Finnish language. Uh, mm. uh, Finland is a bilingual country. Yes. And the Swedish branch started in 1907 and the Finnish 1938. So uh, it was popular around that time in the world in general. So... Um, um yeah then that started here around that time and of course like elsewhere finland has its own poltergate history the folk folklore tales and uh all kind of interesting cases some of, it, of some of it which we uh, tell in, in the book yeah and uh I, yeah, I was, it's, it's, it's pretty it's pretty interesting it's uh, pretty interesting i mean i was looking at there was one part of the book and boy i'm gonna mispronounce this name i'm telling you please forgive me in advance uh yorma elevara right yorma, probably, yorma right did i get yorma right you did it pretty okay. well yorma elevara right so, yeah i'm reading about this and i'm like what wait a minute left to die in the hospital then not right so see these are things that the way you've included in the book, how you've included them in the book, it really makes us stop and pause for a minute. That's why I love this book, because when I read a book for an interview and I and I have to start like underlining and post-it notes because I got to get ready for the interview. But I want to get back because I want to find out more. You're in, this book is filled with entirely filled with stories like this and yet i guess for you it's almost like second nature and for somebody like me i'm going what wow like every page <laughs> isn't that why this book is so important to bring it out in the forefront because I'm there is so much hear. for us to learn right mm, yeah i'm very happy to hear what you say that's great that's great i mean uh, honestly i think you covered this like maybe on one or two pages and i read it and i'm like wait wait what okay all right. I, I could see, I could see this person in the hospital with flowers and some spiritual literature. I could, I could feel myself right there. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and you know, what did you say? My doctor surprised fully recovered to help. Yeah. And return home. I mean, you yeah. covered that one paragraph and I'm like, what? Wait, <laughs> wait. Right. I mean, you do go on and say more about it, mm -hmm. but see, the entire book is filled with this. See, this mm -hmm. is what I love this. If you can read a book like this, and especially when you, by the time you get to, we come from everywhere, by the time you get to, to really looking at some of the things you're talking about, you don't want to stop. Now, I'm not sure where people are going to go to find out more. I don't know if you can help any of us with that. <laughs> if you get the book, you can start Googling it and try to get the English translation. But this is just one book, and you must really write more. Right? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, my gosh, give me another thing to do, <laughs> one more thing to do. Maybe, um, maybe. And let me ask you a question outside of the book, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to put you on the spot. And the good news is we only have like five or six minutes left, so this is good. All right, good. Who, after you wrote the book, and I don't know what, I don't know what the publishers did with the book, but I know what publishers do. But after you were done with the book, is there any one person, thing, situation where you said, oh, I should have put that in the book? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Uh, a very, I was very lucky to, uh, like, till today, like, uh, I can't think, I, I don't feel bumped like a 
damn it, we missed that. This isn't right, there. Right. There's something that I would have put a bit more here and there and uh, maybe express a bit differently, but all over, I'm very happy like uh, what's ended up in the book. Uh, there, like um, this addendum that uh, you mentioned, like um, <laughs> this is something uh, I, th I think was very important. This was something that I, wanted, I, I would have been happy to have in the Finnish edition too, because uh, I wanted to underline this. These are really like uh, just glimpses uh, of the whole picture. There's so much more. There's so many other persons. And, uh, and we needed to left out from the book uh, some very interesting cases like related to alchemy like a few mm -hmm. hundred years ago right. and this very interesting um, court case related to Turku Academy and, uh, and magic practice, some really interesting stuff. But uh, we needed to somehow frame the book in a meaningful way and make it work as a text. So, so um I th but when it comes to what we manage to put uh, within the covers, uh, I think uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And also when it comes to that, uh, it's not just dry scholar scholarly book or something, but it's kind of a, it uh, it tells uh, of those lives of people, and we don't judge them. Like uh, there's like a people with their strengths and weaknesses, and uh, we just tell what they did, what they thought, and. Uh, give some historical uh, context and uh, cultural references and some cultural analysis here and there. So it makes it more interesting also to people who are not interested in esotericism necessarily yeah. as such, but as a cultural study in general. Like, uh, yeah. So um, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, there's nothing that I would really like uh, no, want, but I want to you, add I, there. I, I, I'm, I'm so glad you said that. And yet I know that as I read this, I can underline some things I want to know more about. And I'm just going to mention one of them right now. I mean, there are a lot of references in here I was vaguely familiar with. Of course, everybody on the planet, I do believe, believes that the reference to the North in Game of Thrones had to do with Finland. I will say mm -hmm. that they... <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to, I mean, there are other people that may want to argue otherwise, but there's even a hotel in Finland, right? Um, but here's the thing that I read. I'd never heard of it before. And I, and, and, and I, we have a couple of minutes left. When I got to the part in the book and the section, I got to make sure I get this right. The four, the four dimensions, the four dimensional church of radioactive love. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I just wanted you to write a whole book on this. <laughs> Let's just tell, I mean, it, it's a small part of the book, but I, I'm telling you, you got my attention. Can yeah, you tell sure. people about this a little bit in the couple of minutes we have left? Because the idea of putting something like in the book really points to the fact of how little we know about them. Then. Well, this is uh, this uh, radioactive love that you mentioned. This is in the chapter about UFOs. Yeah. And, uh, it, uh, it was to talk about Margit Lilius, Lilius Mustaba, uh, who was a Finnish yeah. ballet dancer who emigrated to the States eventually. And he had uh, encounters with UFOs and aliens, both in Finland and the States. And uh, during one of her encounters with these beings, uh, she was given kind of a teaching. And uh, one of these teachings was, uh, or, or was called that what they are teaching, that it's, it's, it's about radioactive love, whatever that is. But uh, yeah. there, there comes more like a de more closer definition after that, that what it's all about. And yep. you can see the theosophical and other influences. But, and they can uh, read the book and yeah. get the whole story. Yes, yes. Right. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but what I loved about it was there's so many things in your book like that. You see... If you're somebody like me and been doing this 20 years, average of 10 interviews a week for 20 years, the fact that I, I come across a book like this and there's so much more I want to know, that's what people are going to take away from it. I bet the people we're listening here today, they're saying, what is she saying? Is she saying radioactive? I'm saying radioactive love. But when you go read it and you take the story, this entire, this, this one part of the book could be like its own movie. And that's what I love about what you've done. The other thing that I love is that you're really honoring something about Finland. You're really taking people on a journey to educate us that there have been some people in, you know, in Finland that have really stood up, that really talked about things, that have really come out and really set some groundwork 
for further conversations, you know, deeper embodiment in understanding and learning. And I think people don't know enough about that about Finland. I'm very glad to hear yeah. about yeah. that. But then, then we have managed to achieve a little bit of what we want. You have managed to achieve it, but I'm <laughs> going to tell you, I'm going to keep bugging you and I'm going to keep bugging your public publisher because awesome. there are things in this book, they need another part. Um, thank you so much for today. Please let folks know how they can get a copy of the book. And I would love to know your personal message, what you'd like to leave us with today. Um, the book can be obtained uh, either directly from yeah. Inner Traditions, from the website, or from your local bookstore. It's pretty well available uh, as a physical copy from your local bookstore, or of course, online. Amazon is, of course, a very popular place, but there are also yeah. tons of other places. Yeah. So online or either online or from your local bookstore, it's very well available. And uh, we have a Facebook page, Instagram page, where there are the pictures that you can find from the book. Oh, um, amazing. They are in color there, and there's some extra information. So those are the places I think uh, would be okay. good to look for. Yeah. Okay, I knew that was going to be the last question, but I think I have 30 seconds. I got to ask you this: What's next for you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Life is a uh, is a mystery, and I'm trying to be open to it and uh, embrace whatever comes. <laughs> I'm like Great. right there. Awesome. And I love how benevolent the universe is and how wonderfully surprising it can be. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for being here on the show. Thank you for sharing some things that most people don't understand or know about, but intuitively they're yearning to know it. Thank you so much for everything. Oh, thank you. It was an honor to be here in your yeah. great show. Thank, thank you. you. I want to thank you, Manzanita, Linda. Thank you so much for setting this up. I want to thank you, Benny, for doing what you do. And also, Jacob, thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. Please go to Amazon. Hello. Um, let me just say to everybody, there's an audio version. The audio version, oh, my goodness. You're going to have to, like, stop it and say, like, what do you say? What, they, what are they? Just get it. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time.